Welcome back. Discussions are from the African Nations Championships still going on. Morocco, yes, undisputed champions. They played arguably the best football at the competition that they hosted. So they broke record, became the first country to host and win the African Nations Championships. And then for Nigeria and our football, a lot of persons are saying fix the league, train the coaches, teach our players how to be intelligent. And we saw a lot of uh, crude play, uh, the red cards, the testaments, sometimes not opening to spaces. And if you leave Nigerian fans, they become coaches. Everybody is talking now. But we have opened a thread on our social media platform. Uh, what are the positives uh, for Nigeria after competing at the African Nations Championships? Talk to us, Twitter, channels underscore sports, Facebook channels, I face post. Let's tell you the story of what went down uh, as for the third place match. That that's when we also saw good football uh, when Libya and Sudan fouled out, standard 1 1 after regulation time. Uh, so, penalties are to decide the winner, and it was surprise, surprise. Yeah, very Sudan. surprising. Uh, Sudan got on the um, gold by header in the first half, and uh, for large spells of the game, they kept Libya on the back foot, trying to um, get uh, more goals, but that didn't come their way. Libyans, towards the end of the second half, I'm um, equalizing goal, but the goalkeeper of Sudan mm. was the hero on the night saving two penalties wow. and um, for Libya they gave a good fight but um, the Sudanese were just um, the better side on the night who stood head and shoulders above the opponent. That's right so uh, congratulations to Sudan showed good signs uh, so you see um, Nigeria deserves some kudos mm. yeah for beating that Sudanese side um, but let's talk about this Moroccan team they did so well in your bond. Ayub El Kabi, what a player. What a player. I mean, I, I looked at him yesterday and I felt, felt for him because when you try the bicycle kick twice <laughs> and it comes off first the post, the crossbar, and then it comes off the post in the second half. I mean, he was sensational. His movement, you, you, you talk about our players and on the day, we lacked in technicality. We, we, we lacked in game application. Hmm. We, we, we lacked in, in composure because we're playing a side where that clearly were technically more gifted than us. Technically, they applied themselves a lot better on the football field. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. And this boils down to coaching Austin. I don't want to lay into our, our coaches, but our coaches have got to up the ante. Our hmm. coaches need to improve themselves. Because you could see that the, the Moroccan players, it's not about talent. It's about technique. It's about application. It's about what are you expected to do on the football field. And we went against the Moroccan side that we've seen them play in this tournament, how they go through the gears against mm. teams they were attacking i saw the guy the jersey number 11 had had that on the left hand side and had dropped the guy who scored uh -huh. twice they were tearing into our defenders and we're so naive because i'm looking at the bench and i'm thinking you have a left foot in a winger two wingers who've got so much pace who are tearing through your your, your defense what do you do you double up on them get the full back and the right wing the the guy on on the on the right wing to sit back and let's defend, mm. let's block spaces, don't give them too much spaces. And be intelligent mm. with the ball. Because they said they were playing uh, against a lot of things. They mentioned the rain, they mentioned mm. weather, they mentioned the pitch. They also mentioned the referee again, <laughs> hello. <laughs> but, but, but Austin, I've got to say, Austin, I've got to say the referee, <laughs> the referee made some, some really frustrating calls. And this is where game management comes in. Yeah. When decisions are not coming your way, as a team, or as a manager, you've got to get your players to keep their heads. Because I saw Nigerian players throwing their hands in the air, getting frustrated. That's right. Back that's, at the not the, that's not the mentality you should give such game. Kyle, then you keep the ball and make intelligent use of it. Yes, um, Gabriel Lukechuku are uh, the penalty call that I felt could have gone Nigeria's yeah. mm -hmm. way, quite frankly. But I think the players let their heads down. Yeah. Immediately after uh, Peter Energy got red carded. Mm. And from time memorial, we find it difficult to actually negotiate game whenever a player of ours gets red carded. And from that moment, yes, Stanley Suyusu made some changes. But for the life of me, I could not come to terms as to why they just made our full backs look so redundant. They were because just turning them. Because these guys are athletic. These guys are athletic and they're, they're playing with so yes, much we know support. Osas Okoro overlaps. Yeah. But when he does that, who covers the rear? Uh, exactly my point. Uh, so Osas Okoro is overlapping. Yeah. He's got energy. Now, against Morocco, you have a speedy winger who's sitting on you, who's not following you. So every time Osas Okoro overlapped into the Moroccan half, 
the Moroccans, the, the, the left winger at that on just the number 11, mm -hmm. stood still in his half, waiting for the ball to be passed to him because there were massive gap left behind by the guy who's leaving his space. So mm. I'm thinking a manager is looking at this fan and saying, no, we we'll have two speedy wingers to play against. We cannot be doing that overlapping game. I thought Gabriel Okochigo is a guy who, mm. who, who could hold on himself very well. I, I just thought we could have gone long, long. We uh. could have gone with the long ball to him, bring it down and okay. all of that. But Calm down, guys. Ooh, Austin. I know how difficult it is for you guys. <laughs> Let's go good. It has come <laughs> and gone. It in stride, good. It's one because of those I things. just wanted you guys to let it go. <laughs> that means we've better than record of 2014. There you go. Getting into Positives. the Positives. Yeah, those, those the We positive. can go on and on and call names. Steven Eze gave a good account of himself. Yeah, he did. Persons who ask questions that, oh, he didn't do well against Sudan and, of course, the final match. He could Cohen, let go and let go. Yes, Cohen, he does show it to Daniel Itodo. Yes, I, I had my doubts, but yeah. no man impressed. Me. There you go. Even Gabriel Okechukwu after Sunday Fale's um, injury from the quarterfinals, he mm. grew in confidence with each game. And generally, you can keep mentioning even that Ojo recalled that fantastic goal is called Positive. against Equatorial There Guinea. must be lessons. Yeah. Ikechiko is the one and was doing good, got injured. Department. That's right. Dele Ajiboye gave a good Dele account. Ajiboye, he gave a good right. account could of himself. Much, much more than four. Could, could have been eight. Even at the time he was considering, he was still doing well. Yeah. Because the defense was just being turned apart and you cannot blame at the goalkeeper. So, that's, that's what we want to hear. Well, some Nigerian football fans will still disagree. A of them saying, no, this team, nah, come on, they cannot represent Nigeria. None of them deserves to be called uh, to the Super Eagles, except maybe the goalkeepers. Uh, but the good thing is, out of all of these talks, none of them will coach the Super Eagles. Coach Salis Yusuf is a coach of that led Nigeria at the African Nations Championship. He's been talking not so much, but he spoke to Irene Ewawan after that match. Let's listen to him. Because we gave our best and I would say luck was against us. No, nothing went wrong. We were playing against the fans, we were playing against the referee and we were playing against our opponents. The referee was very much against us and we could see it. So there was no way we could play because he didn't give us a chance to play the way we normally want to play. Uh, I would just have to say uh, we're really sorry for the results and um, we hope to do better next time. Oh, I'm not disappointed because I know my team that we are going through so many injuries, uh, the players try to play with just injuries and we have like uh, four regulars that are even not in, cannot even dress up. And uh, it's football, it happens. So that's Coach Salis who used to, uh, was so short but it ended well. That it's football and it happens, it happens guys. Uh, you also listen to uh, Gabriel Okechuku, uh -huh, said the same thing that we talked about here. Said the referee, said officiating was poor. But he said we are sorry. They are sorry for letting Nigerians down because they know that uh, you Nigerian <laughs> football pundits and fans, the moment you see the Super Eagles or the Green White Green, you just want victory. Well, yeah. the thing is, uh, if you get to the finals, Go Everybody wants to win. Everybody yeah. wants to win. Uh, Nigeria will not tell you, you will not want to listen to that. We went there for development, um, to discover and grow talent. You were in the finals. They wanted the Chan Eagles to win it at least for the first time. But yeah. we're better in all departments. Yeah. From the defense to the middle of the park and even in the final third in all departments. Tell me a the team. Last Lions. Coyote, tell me a team at this African Nations Championship that would have beaten Morocco. I hmm. don't see that team. None. I don't see that team. Oh, That's what everybody... The best, Recall that uh, Wilder Casablanca won the CAF Champions League uh -huh. last season. Uh, a combo of some of the players who featured for the Moroccan senior national team, coached by Avery Nad, some yeah. of them were in the part team. It, the yeah. part and the Wilder Casablanca and even Corv Raja Casablanca came together. They've been a close-knit side for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. And that we saw in the tournament. They scored close to 20 goals. Mm. El Kabi account for close to 10. So it's understandable that um, home support also played a role. And our lads, maybe the psyche on the night was just not in their favor from the blast of the whistle. They mm. were just better than them. I think the Moroccans... In your but when you remember that, mm. that's, that's why I brought it up. When you remember that, this Moroccan team would have beaten any team. Any, any team. Then, they, you should, they, they, then you they, should breathe. I mean, when you think about the fact that Cameroon were in this competition, Ivory Coast were in this competition, they didn't make any headway in the competition. You've got to give the Chan Eagles a lot of credit. Mm. In this tournament, we could have had a Kingsley duo. He went to Tunisia. Mm. We could have had a Risa uh, uh, Fis that Remu. Yeah. He went to Ghana. Chima we could have had yeah. Chima Kass yeah. in this tournament. And these are these are the quality players. So this team was horribly assembled. Yeah. You cannot 
criticize this team too much. I mean, you can criticize what they did yesterday, yeah. but on the whole, you've got to give them credit for getting to the final. Not enough time to prepare, yeah. not the great facilities to prepare. Uh -huh. A lot of things went against this time, but they went to the final, and it's great credit to them. Guys have been playing. The guys there are from the league. They mm. travel around, play under the sun. Uh, they're not used to the weather that These is guys fly, fly around from Rabat to Casablanca, you know, and, and, they, from and they know their weather. Agadiet, I don't, no Marrakech, excuses, guys. Casablanca. Let's set the record straight. straight. No excuses whatsoever for uh, for the result. But these are factors. Come on. Yeah. Until the problem is solved, it is still a problem. True. There's some problems <laughs> going on with football in Nigeria. If you don't solve those problems, they don't start expecting magic. Mm. Uh, there's a level to which luck. And individual desire, talent, yeah. desire, we call it in Niger spirit, can take you to. Uh, but no, the, Camaro, the Moroccan side, they did so well and they deserve to be winners. That draft was man of the match in that final game. But the man, Ayub El Kabi, let's, look, let's take a look at uh, this, this um, information that you see now. Scored nine goals. He was the MVP, undoubtedly. No one comes close. El Kabi, very sharp, good one. Morocco can actually use him for the World Cup. No, he, certainly. Mm. Um, I expect Emma Renato to pick a number of players from um, the side. Recall the bicycle kick that um, let um, De La Jiboye stunned. Yeah. And eventually, I'm getting amongst goals because even the players were goading him. They wanted him to at least get, get a, a goal. goal. See his movements, his positioning. His positioning, it's, movements, it's, it's so intelligent. Top notch. Uh, and um, he clearly deserved it because going into the final, mm. and he was going to emerge a player of the tournament. That's right. And uh, the top scorer, basically. That's right. And that's it. Uh, he got it. Uh, Ayub El Kabi. Uh, keep that name. Watch that yeah. space. Uh, this guy can actually go on to be uh, a sensation in African football. Let's get on with the show now. Talk about March Day 6, March Day 7. Why am I saying March Day 6? March day six. God, I don't know. It's just running. <laughs> March Day 7 <laughs> of the Nigerian Professional Football League. We saw some interesting results, but let's just run uh, through it once again. March Day 7 of the Nigerian Professional Football League. Uh, some of the guys are not smiling. And I'm glad seeing these results because uh, those two teams will represent Nigeria at the continental level. Aqua United, uh, it was a rush against Wiki Torres. Uh, they smashed Wiki Torres by four goals to nothing. And what we're saying, that was high scoring play. Two United say, add one to that. <laughs> but the story with Sunshine Stars, not so good. But we like what the league management company they're doing. Welfare must be top notch. So if you are not paying players and you expect them to play for you, the LMC, they're coming for you. No, 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 it's not happening. So uh, we hear they, they played with only 11 players. When I, they, they did we have reserve uh, and all of that. So not good news coming from Sunshine Stars. Uh, tomorrow we'll try to uh, put more color to that discussion, speak to representatives from the club to understand what's going on. Katsina United 2, Niger Tornado 0, Rivers United, the video go round. This is a brotherly game right there uh, by a single goal. <laughs> Abia Warriors and Inigo Rangers shared the spoils, uh, attended goalless. Uh, El Kanemi and Aimba did the same thing, also played mm -hmm. goalless. Uh, While well, this was the result we're waiting for today, Nassau United beating UB Desert Stars 3 0. Austin, interestingly, mm. all the results in March the 7th, no real side scored a goal. Woo! Look at it again. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, uh, uh, but for Aqua United and um, Play 2 United, mm. they did quite well. They are on top of the law, just a point separating the two sides, doing quite well. And um, for Tosin Amoyeli of Play 2 United, he grabbed a brace. And for Junior Lukusa of Kano Pillars, seventh goal player. of the season. Wow. I've kind of been observing from his days at First Bank and wow. how he has blossomed into uh, a very, very good striker. Let's see if he can equal or surpass the record set by Mfomundo some seasons back. It's still mm. early days yet, but we can see a number of players making a claim for themselves and um, giving maybe the Chan Eagles handlers and even mm. Eagles uh, technical advisors talking about Ghana Troll. Yeah. At least something to worry about looking in their direction. But it's a good thing that um, our campaigners on the continent, Aqua United, uh, Play 2 United are doing well. But for MFM, I'm still... Same old, same old. Uh, same old, same old on the road. Hmm. I understand that they did try, um, trying to keep the canopillars at bay, but at some point they succumbed well, to the firepower of canopillars. Yeah. Inyobo, what got you talking? One thing, the LMC, winners for the weekend. Thank you. For me, I, 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 I just hmm. feel that I just feel that the LMC are beginning to 
to step up to the plate. Because the say it was player foot that you must make persons understand we, we that say, this is professional say, football. The league has got to be played right. by the letter of the law. That's right. Now, if you set laws and say, this thing has to be done this way, if you do not do this, this is what will happen. By the time you use one team and set an example, mm. every other person will take notice. And I feel LMC did 100 out of 100 this I weekend agree. for me. I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not happy that Sunshine Stars lost in the way they lost, yeah. but things have got to be done. There right. are lessons If now. you cannot do mm. well, if you cannot run the club professionally, please step out of the side of That's the right. league yeah. so that we can run the league well. So big ups to LMC. Great shout out to them because I thought they, they put their foot down. Absolutely. That's right. That goal you didn't see away. The LMC. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so nice much. Guys. Thank you so much, guys, <laughs> for coming on the show tonight. And of course, to you, wherever you are in the world watching sports tonight on Channels TV, you see it's so much fun. So keep talking to us on Twitter channels, on the sports, Facebook channels, I have sports. That's the show. For the team, I'm Austin O'Connor, and sport is so much fun. So in everything you do, remember, let's keep talking sports. Bye for now.